Okay, let's talk about the cover. Now I did do the lay flat method for making my cover and I do have a video that shows the entire process and I'll link that down below. But um, the cover for the pieces that you'll need are uh, chipboard pieces, two at nine by seven, one at three by seven, that will be the spine. And then you need cardstock to cover everything, two at 11 by nine, one at six by nine, and one at six by six and seven eighths. So that will cover the chipboard pieces, the spine, and then the inside of the spine. So that's what you're gonna need for your album. Now, what I ended up doing, um, this album is nine by seven, and I had some leftover paper. And I decided that I was gonna cut so this strip here, so let's let's measure. So the light green pattern paper underneath, I cut at eight and seven eighths by six and seven eighths. And then I had this piece of paper here that I wanted to use on the cover. So what I did was I cut it at six inches wide and then I cut it at, let's see, six and five eighths inch tall. And I put that down and then I had this piece of coordinating cardstock that I had left over and I used that to complete that. And then I took this ribbon and wrapped around the cover. So that's how I did the cover. Let me open this up and I did it on the front and the back. So that way I was able to use one strip of the paper and I cut it at six inches wide and I was able to you know, use the other piece of that paper for something else. And then I used these pieces to kind of um, you know, um, <clears throat> make up the difference, I guess you could say. I used this solid green on the spine and then I used some chipboard pieces to decorate that. So then on the inside, let's talk about the inside. Let me turn it around. So on the inside back cover, I decided to do like a layout and I had these pieces that I did get with the design team package. And where is the actual paper package? Mm -mm -mm. There it is. This is the paper package. Okay, so this was the ephemera page pieces that are supposed to go on scrapbook papers. And I thought, well, I'm gonna use these and kind of create a layout on the inside of my album. So that's what I ended up doing. So I used the pieces and I kind of layered them around. And then I did use one piece of craft cardstock uh, to create a photo mat for here. So that's the only time I use craft cardstock. Um, that in on the inside front cover, I'm gonna show you that in a second. I did use uh, winter gray cardstock for the album. I thought that it really matched the papers just beautifully and kind of picked up the gray and the off whites and stuff in the paper collection. I just thought it, um, I thought it looked really pretty. I didn't ink any of my papers because this antique gray is so, um, you know, light. I didn't want to like risk messing up my papers, you know, when I was gluing them on and like smearing ink all over the place. So I didn't do that. Um, you certainly could if you wanted to. So anyway, um, that's what I ended up doing for that. And I did do all the pieces so that you could tuck pictures underneath here and just created a nice layout. So then on the front cover, and I left this open because I wanted to show you what I did before I glued it all down. So I have, um, some pieces here. This is actually for my um, spines. So I'm gonna put that off to the side. And then um, what I ended up doing was I cut this piece of paper uh, to fit the inside of the cupboard. So this is eight and seven eighths by six and seven eighths. And then I decided I wanted to put another photo mat on here, but I really wanted to keep this image and I wanted to keep the book pages in the image. So what I did was I used my straight edge knife and I just cut around and then tucked the picture underneath that cut so that I could go ahead and use that. So you can kind of see that's what's underneath the picture. And then I'm just gonna tuck this under here and we're gonna glue that down. So um, that's, I just, I just wanted to show you that's how I did that. Um, so then that is going to go right here. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna leave this, I'm not gonna glue that down because I wanna tuck the picture underneath here, okay? But I am, what I am gonna do is get this out of the way for just a second, and I'm gonna line this up where I want it, make sure everything's nice and straight, and then I'm gonna just go under here and add a little glue to kind of secure that frame, okay? 
get it all over my table while I'm at it too. All right, so now we can tuck a picture underneath there and this is nice and secure, right? And then if you need to, you can go under here, you know, add a little bit to secure that down. And then this is going to glue right to the inside cover. So we're gonna have two layouts on our inside covers. Um, and the other reason I did this is because our pages are so interactive that I really just wanted to have a space that's not gonna be super, you know, full, I guess, with lots of stuff. So we're just gonna glue all that down. And you can see how I wrapped the ribbon around the cover uh, right over the seam of those two papers joining. And um, we're just gonna glue that, tuck it underneath, and that will glue right here. Let me grab my rag here. Okay. Okay. Just like so. Then I took a couple of the page pieces. I'm gonna glue this just right to the top here. And just kinda, yeah, just as like a little page decoration there. And then I cut the trees, I cut the bottom off so that I could kind of stick that right to the edge of the paper. So I'm just gonna put a little glue here and then up here to secure that. And that is going to be the decoration. And then you can put a four by six page or uh, photo there, which will be really nice. Okay. I just think that turned out beautiful. Okay. This photo mat here, so this is four and a quarter by six and a quarter. And this photo mat here is five by seven. Okay. So you will have to trim down a five by seven picture there, or um, you could put a four by six here and do like maybe another photo mat underneath if you wanted to. Either way, I think that's good, but that's how I did the cover. And I think that just turned out gorgeous. I think I got <laughs> hot glue strings from my previous um, tutorial that I just filmed. Okay, so that's, that's the cover of the book. And I just, I really like how that turned out. And I love, so you guys know I'm not like a fisherman or a camper or anything like that, but I do appreciate the outdoors. But I do love the fact that this paper collection has lots of like butterfly images and insects and all kinds of other things. So, you know, this is really a paper collection that you could use for all kinds of different outdoor activities, which I really like. All right, so let's talk about the pages here. I already have made two of them and um, we're gonna make one on camera, but I made them all the same. We've already done a walkthrough on this, um, but just real super fast, I'll show you what happens. So on the front of the page, we have a pocket here and um, I decorated it simply with a sticker and then I have a cut apart and then I took another cut apart. Whoops, excuse me, this one's different. Um, it says late days are the best days, but then when you turn it over, it has another little flip. I just cut that down and then you could put a photo back there if you want to. So I did that and then it opens up with seam binding. All right, and I left the left sides of the pages kind of blank. I did put um, little embellishments to go ahead and, you know, like add a little embellishment, but I, I wanted a nice place for a photo. And then I did use pattern paper on these pages for a couple of reasons. Um, one, because it looks really super pretty like this, but also because the tabs where our pages attach are gonna be under here, so that'll help cover those up. So that's how I did that. Again, these are all done so you could pop photos underneath there. You could also use this page for journaling because the, the cardstock is so light colored that you could co totally do that. Um, here, we've got that. And because I'm from Oregon, we have to have a Sasquatch in there, right? <laughs> so I had to do it. I just had to do it. So I glued this bad boy down so that you could tuck a picture underneath there. Okay. Um, but I just, I had, I had to put him in there. I just had to. So we do have one Bigfoot in there and, uh, yeah, it, it's Oregon. So, you know, you have to, so, <laughs> 
<laughs> then this page opens up here and you have, um, I used the coordinating cardstock. I wanted to kind of play with it and see what I could do with it. And then underneath the first two where they attach to the page, I made a pocket. So we were going to create tags out of the four by six cut aparts and we're going to have those in there for another journaling opportunity. All right. So then that all closes up and then, um, we're going to tie this. And then this is the fun thing. I really like this element. I've done this before um, in a project I made like a hundred years ago with envelopes. And I called it like you never lose your tag um, kind of thing. And um, it was an old, old tutorial, but I did it so that, I mean, literally you cannot pull this tag out. It's like a, it's like a pull out from, a, you know, a, um, well, now I can't get back in like a pull out from a kid's book or something. So it just pops out like that. And I think that is, it's a super cool idea. I think you're going to like it. It's decorated front and back basically. So you could uh, put pictures in there if you wanted to, you could do journaling on there. Um, really kind of cute idea. So it, it's a pull out tag, but it doesn't pull out all the way and it's meant to do that. And I'm going to show you how to create that. And then we have this piece that opens up and I left the front open so you could put a picture there. And then this one also has a pop-up element as well. And again, I wanted to kind of use the pattern paper in a couple different ways and see what I could do with it. So we have that nice little element there. And then on this side here, I decided I was toying with a bunch of ideas and then I just decided, you know what, I'm going to leave that piece blank and add a beautiful piece of coordinating cardstock that comes with this paper collection and create a photo mat. So again, I use the die cuts to decorate. You can tuck a picture behind and that's what that looks like. So um, that's one page set that I did. And then here's the other page set that I made. Um, again, we've done the walkthrough, so you've seen all this before, but same thing, pocket on the front, your four pages, your don't lose your tag tag here, the pull out tag that doesn't come out. And then on the back here, again, it comes out and then you have your element here and you have your photo mat here. So these pages are loaded. You can see that they're pretty thick. Um, so that's the other reason why, cause there's lots of opportunity on each page. There's, um, you know, three different tags, there's a pocket, there's all kinds of stuff. So, um, because I loaded these up, that's why I did the cover the way I did. And, um, I, that's also why I did a three quarter inch gusset, because you can see that just the additions on the front alone are about a quarter of an inch as it is. So, um, and if you look at the side, they're pretty, pretty loaded. And once you get pictures and everything in there. So that's why I did the three quarter inch, um, spine piece on this particular album to give us lots of room. And that's why I did the covers, um, just as photo mounts because these were so loaded. Okay. So let's get into talking about how to make these pages. So for the base page, you will need a piece of cardstock that is nine by six. The pullout tag pocket is nine by seven. So you'll need one of those. The tag that we're going to create is eight and a half by five and three quarters. And then you'll need pattern paper for this. You'll need two pieces that are eight by four and an eighth. And we will need these to actually create the page. Um, this is harder to do once we have actually, um, you know, put it together. So we're, we're going to do it as we create this piece. Okay. So um, let's put that off to the side. I'm going to put this here. So hopefully that will stay in camera. And then we're going to grab our scoreboard and do some scoring. Okay. So let's start with our base page. All right. And all of our base pages are going to be the same. So each, each of these pages is made identically. So all of this, you'll need to do it three times. Okay. So we have our first piece that's nine by six. With the nine at the top, we're going to score at three quarters and at one. That will give you the three quarter inch piece for making the um, spine attachment. So this is going to attach to the book and then a quarter inch piece for a um, kind of give space that I really like to do. And you're just going to fold and burnish those two scores. Just be careful on that quarter inch and get it nice and straight. All right. All right, so that's done. You should have a piece that looks like that. And then you can set that aside. The next thing we're going to do is the pull out tag pocket. This piece is nine by seven. 
And what you're going to do is you're going to score at half and at eight and a half, eight and a half, excuse me, on the nine. So at half and an eight and a half on the nine inch and then turn it to the seven. Score at half and at six and a half. Okay. Then before you take this out of your scoreboard, we're going to go back up to the top. And we're going to make a little score at the three quarter inch mark from the first score. So you're gonna to go to one and a quarter and you're just gonna score down to that half inch mark, okay? So this is just basically going to be a, um, a trimming kind of um, mark, okay? Not really a score, but just a trimming mark, okay? So right now at the top here, you should have a half inch score that goes all the way up. Then you should have a half inch square here and then a three quarter inch piece here in between that little marking score okay and that's all we're going to do with that and then take this out we'll put it to the side for a second and then this is your tag now we're going to do some scoring here but be very careful and watch this before you do it don't do it as i'm doing it because i want to make sure you understand there are it's it's going to be a little bit different okay so it's eight and a half by five and three quarters and what we're gonna do is we're gonna end up making it like a T-shape kind of thing. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go on the one inch mark here at the top and we're just gonna score down, um, you know, just a little bit, like three quarters of an inch, okay? So just, just kind of roughly just make a score. It doesn't even have to be very, very much because we're gonna connect the score. So you're gonna go back up and turn it and then you're gonna go down three quarters of an inch and you're gonna go down till you see that one inch mark, okay? So that's gonna take this chunk out. So it's basically a cutting mark is what we're doing, okay? So again, on one of the eight and a half inch sides, we're gonna just make a little score mark here and then you're gonna turn it and you're gonna go at three quarters and go down to that score mark, okay? So we're just gonna have that T shaped. Then you're going to do the same thing on the other side, except for now if you turn it <clears throat> with the other eight and a half at the top. So you have your your little one inch score down here on this side now, not up here. So we're going to go to the seven and a half and make a little mark. Okay. And then turn it. Make sure your T piece is down here. You're going to go to the five and you're going to score down to that little mark. And these are literally just cutting marks, okay? So one inch up, three quarter inch in. And if you would rather use your ruler and a pencil and draw this out, you can, um, that's fine. But you need a one inch piece down at the bottom and you do not, you do not, do not wanna score here, okay? You do not. So then you're gonna just cut this out. So let me get rid of my scoreboard here and then let's, cut that piece out. So we're going to cut those little um, strips out and you're going to actually save them. Okay. So we're going to cut up that one inch piece and then we're going to cut up that three quarter inch line that we did. Okay. And we're going to basically make a T. Okay. Just like that. And we're going to do the same thing on the other side. The little one inch tabs there, I'm trying to cut the score out. The little one inch tabs there are what's going to stop your tag from pulling out. So it's important to keep those intact and it's important not to score here or you're gonna ruin the integrity of your tag because it'll, it'll bend the cardstock and you don't want that. Okay, so we're gonna save one piece that we cut off and what you're gonna do is you're just gonna glue that to the tag. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just put glue all the way across, okay? And we're going to just lay this down and we'll trim it off in a sec, right to the edge of that, of that little T piece, okay? So right to the edge. You can see that I did it right to the edge. If it's over a little bit, we can just trim it off. Not that big of a deal, but this is just going to strengthen this little T piece, okay? And we'll utilize those pieces that we cut out. All right. And then we'll just trim that off, okay, flush. 
like so. Okay, and that's all we're gonna do to prep that. Okay. All right. Then so grab your tag punch um, or freehand cut it, you know, and then match the corners however you prefer to do it. We're going to trim that. Okay. Then we're going to grab our papers. Okay. This will be on the front. This will be on the back. And at this point, it doesn't really matter which one's front or back because it's going to the bottom part's going to be hidden. Um, but I want to make sure that I put like my pattern paper on the front and I put my solids on the back of this tag. So when we put it in the book, it'll, it'll matter. Okay. And we're just going to glue that right to this and it'll glue over the end a little bit. And that's on purpose because that will also help reinforce that tab. That's going to keep this tag in the pocket. All right. So I'm putting glue on my tag and we're just going to Glue that down. I did cover that up. <laughs> I was like, where did my post-it note go? All right, so front and then back. And like I said, it literally does not matter which side of this tag you use for front and back because that little reinforcement is not going to show. Okay, but we do want to make sure that this pattern paper goes down beyond the actual tag so that it slips in and out of the pocket nicely okay so this is important so do cut your pattern papers eight inches long don't short yourself okay because that will help with the mechanism all right so our tag front and back is done we're going to put that off well actually no let's just finish it so all i did to finish it was to punch a hole and I'm just eyeballing this, but right in the middle, punch a hole, set our eyelet. Okay. And then we're going to put our ribbon here. Now this green ribbon is from my stash. And of course you can use any ribbon you want. All right, so we're just gonna thread that through and then I'm going to just use a piece of twine and tie a cute little bow and that'll be secure and done, okay? All right, just make sure it's pulled tight and straight like so. Do a little bow like so. And then let's go ahead and trim oh I need to sharpen these scissors they are getting worn there we go and then I'm gonna grab my lighter here and I'm just going to kind of whoops I don't like the angle. Just gonna kind of very carefully melt the ends so that they don't fray. All right, and then our tag is done, okay? So just be careful when you're using a lighter to do that because you don't wanna burn yourself, all right? So there's our pull out tag we're going to put this over here for just now and then what we're going to do is we're going to grab this piece here so you have your two your box up here and your three quarter inch piece up here so the bottom squares we're just going to whack out sharply okay like that then what we're going to do is we need to kind of save this little um tab so for right now just so I could show you this, we're gonna cut up on those extra like three quarter inch scores. 
okay? And we're gonna cut this top part completely out. Okay, and then what you're gonna do is you're gonna slightly miter that tab and that square. Don't cut that sharply, okay? It's very important because this is how the mechanism kind of helps, or helps the mechanism to work, I should say. All right, so we're just gonna very slightly cut those out, okay? So you should have something that looks like that now, okay? So we're going to fold and burnish Okay. And fold and burnish. All right. So now here's where the magic happens. This is going to attach to the back of our page and that's what's going to create the pocket that our tag is going to sit in. So in order to do that, we'll turn to the back of our page and we have our spine piece, we have our gusset. So we're gonna glue this right to the other side on the back of this page, to right on the other side of that quarter inch mark, okay? Lining everything up, and we're just doing the bottom at this point, okay? So you have your quarter inch and your three quarter inch folds, okay, and then we just attached our pocket right to that edge, okay? Then what you're going to do is grab some tape. We're going to put tape over that seam just to make sure that everything slides nicely. And I cut that way too long. I'll cut a little bit off that. Okay, so tape over the seam so that everything kind of slides nicely. All right, then what we're gonna do is, we're gonna look at this for a second. So these are gonna fold over and they're literally gonna attach right here. But what I want to do is kind of make this angle here so that it goes from the half inch tab. Let me show you the half inch tab and it kind of angles up. So I'm going to just, I'm gonna kind of eyeball it but I'm just gonna cut a little bit of an angle. And the reason why I want you to do that now instead of before is so that you can kind of get that good eyeball of where that's gonna land, okay? So it should glue right on top of there and then have that angle, okay? So I'm just gonna put a little bit of glue here and glue that down. That's gonna be the stopper for our tab. Okay, so we're gonna do the other side. We're gonna, again, kind of eyeball it. You can even like poke it with your fingernail and make a little mark and um, trim that up. Just take that little angle out and then that's gonna glue on top. It, it's important that it glues on top so that it's smooth underneath, okay? This is very important. So you can put glue on either side, doesn't matter, just as long as you glue it on the top. All right, so you should have a piece that now looks like that. So you have kind of a stopper edge and then you can go back and look and just make sure everything's nice and you know flush if you need to trim anything off, but it's nice and straight. You have a nice smooth surface underneath because this tab we did not miter it hardly at all. And then you have these little tabs on top so that the tag doesn't catch on that. Okay, so then this will glue here before we do that. Remember, this is on the back of our page, so we've got our orientation right. We're gonna take our tag, and you're just gonna slide that in there, and you can see that's how it stops, okay? So then you just, you simply just have to really, you know, kind of carefully glue these down to this. So I found it was easier to do it like this, so I'm gonna put glue on these tabs. kind of making sure my tag's out of the way. Put glue there, and then I'm gonna flip this over and lay that down.
All right. Making sure we'll burnish it down. Make sure there's no glue sticking out. All right. And then our tag will not come out. Okay. That makes, isn't that cool? I just think this is the coolest thing ever. I love this and I haven't used it in a long time. And I, I kind of, I think I, I don't know, maybe I perfected it. I don't know. You guys are going to have to let me know what you think. I just think that's really cool. That's our base page. So we're going to make three of those. Okay. So this is the last one that I need to make. Then what we're going to do are stacked pages. All right. For your stacked pages, for each of your page sets, you're going to need four pieces. So you'll need, um, they'll all be six inches tall. You'll need one that's five and a half, six and a half, seven and a half, and eight and a half wide, okay? And on each of these, you're going to score at just half an inch, okay? And that's all you're going to do with that, okay? So on the the sides that have like the half because they're all six inches tall you're going to want to score at half okay so that'll make pages that are five six seven and eight inches long okay or wide i should say right not tall so fold and burnish and miter all of your scores okay and then what you're going to do is after you course miter because I didn't do that. Okay, miter. Then you're gonna put glue on the tab. And then you're going to, on the front of your page, okay, so your, your page should be folded back like that. Right on the other side of that quarter inch mark, you're gonna lay that page down and it should completely cover your page. Okay. And you're going to repeat. So longest page first and so on and so on. And then the top page will end up being the five and a half by six inch page. And that page should, um, you know, once you get the half inch score, that'll be five inches wide, okay? So I'm just folding and burnishing and you're just literally stacking them on top of each other. So that's why I'm calling it, you know, a stacked waterfall because it does waterfall down, but it's stacked. Okay. Oops. So go ahead and you got to miter them. Yep. Miter your edges. And I like mitering my edges because then like the corners of the paper doesn't show, it covers up with the pattern paper pretty easy um, and so on. So yeah. And I cut my pattern papers um, an eighth inch shorter or less big than the piece they're covering. So that's how I did that. So for example, this front page will be five by six so I will cut my pattern paper at four and seven eighths by five and seven eighths to cover. I did go down into the pocket that we're gonna create on here because I wanted to, and I'll show you why, um, because I wanted to cover the seam binding also um, that I'm going to use to attach this. And what did I do with the seam binding that I had? I had some, what did I do with it? Oh, there it is. Threw it on the floor. <laughs> I don't know how I do this all the time. Okay, so you have your pages. One, two, three, and then you have this fourth page. Here's the base page with the tag, just to keep ourselves oriented. So we're going to open this completely up. This is on front of the tag here, and we're going to put our uh, seam binding right here, okay? So grab your seam binding, your centering ruler, we're gonna put a little of that on there. So the page is six inches tall, so three inches from the zero mark. Um, cut your seam binding 12, 13, 14 inches, somewhere around in there, um, and pop that on. So your pattern paper will cover that. 
or actually not your pattern paper, the pocket that we're gonna put on is going to cover that. And then we're gonna go over to the front and you can grab your ruler and go to the three inch mark and our seam binding will go here like so. All right, just like that. Okay, so that's our seam binding that's going to close all of that up. Now let's talk about pocket. The pocket that we're gonna put on the front is six by three and a half. Okay, you're going to put it in your scoreboard. Six at the top, we're going to score at one and five and a half. Turn it, score at half. It will give you a three inch deep pocket. And we're going to miter our corners and I miter the bottoms pretty sharply. All right, and then we'll fold and burnish. Now I'm going to put patterned paper um, completely down into that pocket. So I am not going to do the tape trick thing. If you don't know if you're gonna do that, um, or change your mind or whatever, you can do the tape trick thing. It's not gonna hurt if it's there and you don't even use it. But here's the thing, it's gonna cover part of the seam binding. So the reason why I put pattern paper all the way down was not only to cover all of the tabs, but also to cover the seam binding. So that's why I'm doing that. Um, that's just my thinking. So you can do, you know, however it's more comfy or whatever for you. Um, but that was my thinking on that. Okay, so I'm just gluing on three sides, and I'm putting that right on the bottom, lining that up on my page. Okay. Make sure it's nice and straight. Okay. So there is the pocket, okay? I'm going to get this out of the way, and then what we're going to do is we are going to work on the pop out, okay? So the rest of this is just done simply, um, you know, pattern paper on the pockets like normal. Um, I put pattern paper on these pages, so the right side of the pages, so that it covers up the, um, the tabs and it also cascades down. And then when I did do this, I'll show you with this one. So I used two pieces of the pattern paper. So this is actually the back of this particular pattern. And I alternated them because I thought that was really pretty. But it did take two pieces of paper, or actually about one and a half to do this. So I cut them in strips of five and seven eighths tall. And then I was able to cut um, two of them out of one strip and then I used two other strips to cut the other ones, okay, the way they fit. And then it still left me with another six inch strip from the um, from one of the papers left over. But that's how I did that. So each of these uh, is actually like this one here, the back of the frogs was the plaid, okay? So it took two sheets of paper to do that cover. Just so, you, just so you know how that's how I did it. You can do it however you want. You can mix and match and do all that stuff. Um, but anyways, pattern paper here, 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 and then here. Um, and then you don't need to put pattern paper here because what we're going to do next is going to cover this particular piece. Okay? So, um, that's, that's that. And then let's look at the pop out here for that inside pop out. So I wanted to kind of do something a little bit different with this pop out. And so what I ended up doing was using the um, cardstock that came, um, the coordinating cardstock that came with the pattern paper um, collection. And uh, you will need two pieces that are going to create pockets, and they are five by five and three quarters. And then you need a piece that's nine by five and three quarters. Okay. So on the two pieces that are five and five and three quarters. You're going to put them in your scoreboard with the five at the top and you're just going to score 
at half and at four and a half. We are not doing a score down the bottom. We're just going to glue that, okay? So you're going to do that with both of those. And then on this particular page here, what you're going to do is on the nine, you're going to score at one, at four and a half, and at eight and a half, okay? And that's it. So let's start with these pockets. So miter your corners. I wanted the element inside, but I also wanted tags to go on the inside as well. So I decided that I was going to create this pocket. Now, when you do, when you do use your um, coordinating cardstock, just be careful. You can, the edges can um, be a little tricky to work with and they may, um, Oh, what you call it? They they could rip or tear or anything. So just be very gentle with them, with your scoring and with your folding. Don't go too crazy. Um, I have found that that works best. With this one here, we're going to do this. We're going to miter. If you do not want to use pattern paper for this, you do not have to. Um, you can always... Um, use cardstock and then cover it with pattern paper um, later. Okay, so the two outer ones will fold up and then the middle one will fold down. Okay, and that's how that's supposed to look. All right, so what you're going to do is you're going to glue this tab to this tab right here. So we're going to do a little bit of glue. And I'm going to turn it just so I can see it. And I'm just going to glue it right to the score line, okay? Because I want it to fold, okay? So I want to make sure that I don't get into the score line. And i got to get it straight, though. I can't see it. All right. Like that. So basically what I'm doing is I'm gluing these two pieces together, okay? All right, I'm gonna do that to the other one here, okay? Making sure they're folding. All right, and I'm just trying to be gentle with these papers, okay? All right. So you should have a piece that looks like this now. And what you're going to do is you're going to glue on the back these two tabs to our page. So let's grab our book and let's open it all the way. So we have all of the four pages we just stacked on everything. So this mechanism is going to go on the inside here. Okay. So we're going to glue this piece down to this edge and you should have a nice little border around. Okay. And we're going to just glue those tabs. Okay. Okay. So I found it easier. You just kind of more or less lay it flat. And glue those tabs like this. And again, if you do not want to use this pattern paper for this, you don't have to. You can use cardstock and add pattern paper to it. So I'm just gluing it down and I'm just trying to make sure that everything's nice and straight. All right, gluing it on both sides, okay? So you're, you don't have a tab here, it's underneath, okay? And then I'm just gonna take and put a little line of glue under here at the bottom and glue that down, okay? And that's gonna create a nice pocket for our tab, or tag. All right, and then we're gonna do the same thing over here, okay? So the easiest way to do that again is to fold this, put glue on our tabs, and with a little bit of luck, this is nice and straight and everything will be great. <laughs> so let's see what we can do here. So we're gonna close this book and then open it and pray. And look, I did pretty good. <laughs> I did pretty good. Right on. 
All right. So it will fold up like that. That's how that's going to look. Right on. Okay. And then just put a little glue underneath this bottom here. That will glue that pocket shut. And where did I put on the floor? Yes, that's where it goes. My little rag on the floor. Make sure. Okay, so that's our pop-out element that goes there. So that'll be a good place to put photos. And then it just folds up underneath all the stacked waterfalls. And then that will close like this. Okay, and then behind the pockets where they attach, you're going to have a nice place for your tags. Okay, so I will finish that part up later. We're going to turn the book over, boom, like that. And we're gonna put the elements on the back. And this is going to be kind of the same thing. Um, not quite as fancy, but for the back page, you're going to need a piece of cardstock that's four by 12. All right. I scored it on the 12 at six and just folded it in half. So it's just a nice six inch piece like this. And then you have your pattern paper that we're going to do our little um, fold with. Okay. So I took my scoreboard and this is the front side. I want this to be the front side. So I'm going to just on the front, on the, on the piece that's going to show, I'm going to do a score at six. I'm going to turn it over. And on the back side, I'm going to do three and nine. Okay. So on the front, that's going to show six. And then, whoops, excuse me, turn it over. On the back side, three and nine. So that's going to give me my mountains and valleys. And I'm going to I'm going to make my mountains into valleys and make my valleys into mountains, okay? So I'm just gonna fold this guy so that the middle is the mountain, okay? And then I'm gonna fold the bottom up and I'm gonna fold the top down, okay? Do it nice and gentle. And you're gonna have a piece that looks like this, okay? And we are going to just basically do the same thing, but we're just gonna glue it down, no pockets, okay? So I'm just gonna put glue on this top piece right here and then I'm going to just kind of center that line it up it's about an eighth of an inch on all the sides all right just lay that down okay like so and then I'm going to fold it And then I'm gonna fold my card up, okay? And that should line everything up really nice. And it did. Okay, so there's your pop-up for that page. Now, the last thing we need to do on this page is we're going to put our seam binding on the bottom section. We're gonna go about a, one and a half inches up so I'm going to close my book. This is how it's going to open. So I'm going to turn it over to the back side. And at about one and a half inches here, I'm going to put my seam binding. Okay. All right. So for this one, I'm going to cut off probably like maybe, I don't know, 24, 26 inches or something because I want it to wrap around. And then I, I really dislike it when my seam binding is you know too short so I'm going to do a bigger piece and I'm going to just put that across the bottom like so and then that will tie around the front like so Okay, and then all we need is powdered paper and all that. So then to put it on the page, um, it's it's literally just gluing it down. I, did, I you know, was thinking about doing a pocket behind here, 
And then I thought, nah, it's too much. If you wanted to, you could. Um, but I decided not to. Um, I just decided that this was probably plenty and uh, didn't want to deal with that. So, <laughs> But you certainly could. That would be a variation that you could do. Um, these pages are pretty loaded as they are. So, you know, I was kind of like, well, you know, maybe I don't need anything. Okay. So then that glues down. Make sure we don't have anything seeping up here. Okay. And then when you untie this, then that will be a cute little pop-up as well. And you have places for four beautiful photos. Um, and then this becomes a photo mat here. And then you could definitely use this as a photo mat here. It's four by six. So it's, it's plenty big for that. Um, all right. So what I'm going to do... So I'm going to go off camera. I'm going to finish putting the pattern paper on this. And then when we come back, I will show you how to add it to your album. And then we will be done. So I will see you in a few minutes. Alrighty, people. I have my pages made. And now it's just a matter of putting them in the book. So um, the cover's made. I still need to decorate the front, but you've already seen that because you've seen the walkthrough. Okay, so the cover is made. And then I've got my photo mat kind of layouts on the front and the back, which I think are absolutely gorgeous with this paper. I love this. So we're going to go ahead and add the pages. Now the pages have three quarter inch gussets and they are going to go in at three quarters of an inch okay so um if we look at my ruler i'm gonna get the page out of the way so my spine is three inches so if we go in three quarters of an inch we'll have a three quarter inch space on one side of the spine we're gonna have a three quarter inch space on the other side of the spine and then the middle part is where we're gonna attach our pages okay so what we're gonna do is we're going to get our ruler and I'm going to, and this is the tough part, okay? Um, I have taken to trying to use my um, scoreboard because it's a little easier for me to see. If I line up the edge of where my chipboard is on my spine to one of the black lines on my mat, then it's usually easier for me to see that edge and use my ruler then to line that up properly okay and try and make sure that i've got exactly um you know three eighths of an inch okay and then um if you want to center then you can totally do that too so the book is seven inches tall so i'm going to um center that three and a half on the ends and I'm trying to make sure my three quarter inch marks are set and we're gonna like not breathe and do that so <laughs> first page is gonna go down so we're going to fold it so that I have my three quarter inch tab here we're not gonna glue on the one quarter inch piece because that's going to be a little bit of uh, give space to help our pages and add to the bulk you know it helps with the bulk because I did add a lot of bulk to these pages, okay? So the pages are six, so these would line up at three. And I'm just going to lay that down, give it a second, be very careful and try not to move it around and then press that down, okay? And I'm going to grab my bone folder and I'm gonna just really try and make sure that I have got a good stick. And you can come in from this other side, make sure you don't have any glue seeping out. And then you can go in, and I'm doing this left-handed and I'm totally not left-handed. So I'm gonna turn this around so I can see it. And I'm just gonna kind of press down on that quarter inch gusset just to make sure that it's stuck down really well, okay? And then there's that. So you should have between the chipboard piece and this page about three quarters of an inch, okay? So then I'm gonna put the book right side so you can see it, all right? Then we're gonna turn the page and we're going to add our second page, okay? Our second page is going to be added just butted right up to that first page, all right? So, 
I'm gonna make sure that's nice and folded. We don't need a ruler because we're just gonna use our page to make sure that that is lined up. So we're gonna add our glue. Okay. And then I'm just gonna line that up right to the edge. I'm gonna squish it right in there and press that down using my fingers first. Okay. Bone folder. Okay. Like so. Okay, now the third page is the one that's added differently. So this one is gonna actually be added to the top of that last piece that we just added, okay? And then that way there's no tabs that are sticking out on the other side, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and just add my glue to that three quarter inch tab again. And then I'm gonna add this to the top like so, and line those up. And make sure that we're stuck down and no glue is sticking out because I don't want any issues with the glue sticking where it's not supposed to. I'm just gonna run that edge a little bit. All right. Then I have some pattern paper that I've cut, and this is 5 8 by 5 and 7 8 to go right in the middle here. Okay, and then my next one here. Gonna lay that down. So I use the same paper that I used on the spine so it kind of looks like it's blending in a little bit better. Um, yeah, so there's my book. All right, that's it, that's the construction. I just need to put the cover stuff on, but then, um, you know, you guys have already seen that. Um, the covers are a little bit bigger than the pages because I wanted them to accommodate all the fluffy and the tags and everything. So I did that on purpose. Um, I hope you enjoyed the tutorial and um, I will see you again soon with more projects using this beautiful collection, Simple Vintage Lakeside uh, by Simple Stories. And it's available at Country Craft Creations at countrycraftcreations.com. So let me know what you think. If you have any questions, let me know and I will see you again soon. Thanks for watching. Bye.